today's episode of the Day of Love. We wouldn't have a show if it weren't for our dedicated viewers, so thank you so, so much for being here and for showing up. My name is Kelly Frazier, your host and inspired creator for the Day of Love. So what is the Day of Love and how do you know if it's the right fit for you? Well, you're in the right place if you find yourself a little depleted, maybe overgiving sometimes. Maybe you long for a deeper connection with God so that you can create a better world for yourself and for your family. Well, these things take healing and restoration of the inner game. And that, my friend, is why we're all here. Now, we have an excellent show for you tonight with special guests and giveaways. But first, we want to thank our sponsors because, just like you, they all play a huge, huge role in keeping this show alive. So we want to thank Promote Your Passion, Hugs, Angelic Healings, Connecting LLC, and Kim Live TV. We want to thank them all for being our devoted sponsors. Now, if you're watching from our live stream page, you're going to see a chat box in the lower right corner of your screen. So what we want you to do is just click on that tab, and you're going to see it pop open. That way you get to ask questions or place comments in the chat box. And that way, if you want to talk to any of our speakers tonight, we will make sure that your question gets asked. And what we are normally doing here on our show is not what you're going to see tonight. So let me just explain. Normally we have a teaching moment that I do for you know, five or ten minutes, and then we have a discussion panel, and then we ask for Q&A. Well, tonight we're going to do something a little different because we have a very, very unique opportunity with our special guest. Now, her in-depth knowledge on a topic for tonight, which is forgiveness, is brought to our team, we just had this unanimous decision that we would rather just invite her on the show and ask about her personal journey through a project that she called Project Forgive. I'm going to tell you more about that in just a few moments, but let me introduce our panel to you tonight. Kim Beasley is our live stream producer and our resident social media expert. She's also an author, a speaker, and Kim has the distinguished duties of being the monitor on the live chat. So thank you so much, Kim, for being here. I know we couldn't do this without you. All right, next we have Kelly Falardo, author and speaker who is also an ambassador for the Day of Love. Welcome, Kelly. Thank then you. We then we have Gail Blackburn, who is our resident website designer. Gail is also an author and a speaker and the MC for our Day of Love live event. Now, tonight we have a rare opportunity to speak with filmmaker and six-time Emmy Award-winning media coach, Sean Duperin. Sean's been in Whoa. business for 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, woohoo! <laughs> for 20 years. She's worked with corporations, entrepreneurs, universities, and government agencies across the globe. She's filmed hundreds of celebrities, including people like Morgan Freeman, which is one of my favorites, uh -huh. Bill Cosby, and so many more. And you've probably seen her on The Early Show, CNN, CBS. She's been featured in magazines like USA Today, The Washington Post, and honestly, I could go on and on. But truthfully, there are a number of reasons why I chose to invite Sean here tonight, one of which, because honestly, I could not think of a greater movement to support on a global level than a movement of forgiveness. And that's really what the Day of Love is all about. So, Sean, thank you so much, and a big welcome to you. I am just tickled to be here, ladies. Thank you for having me. Awesome. All right. Well, Sean, we look forward to hearing all about Project Forgive tonight. And one of the things that I absolutely love about you is that you've interviewed some of the most exciting people in our country. But I'd love for you to share what you learned from some of the most important people in our country, those five-year-old little children. So if you could just start by telling us what were some of their responses when you asked them what forgiveness meant? You know, you know, it's. I love talking about this, and no one really asked me about that because there's something significant that happened. You know, we did this little video that did go viral, and how we open up the little viral video is asking these four and five year olds what they thought forgiveness was. And as you can imagine, because kids are so pure, they're so open, they haven't had their hearts broken a whole lot at four and five years old, right? They're just getting going. And um, they had some really pure and magical things to say that are really the essence of forgiveness. Where it was really interesting because I asked them other questions. And the question that most intrigued me, and especially about this inquiry and, project, and the notion of looking at forgiveness and Project Forgive, is I asked them how they felt about anger. Ooh. And it was, you know, like, what is anger? And I'm like, what is anger? What about that? All of them, and there were 24 of them that I interviewed, all of them said anger was bad. Mm. And I thought, 
hmm, isn't that interesting? Because I'm speaking to all these experts across the globe, learning so much about forgiveness in academia and through this project, and, and anger is an important piece of moving through forgiveness. It's critical, actually. Right. And culturally, we are. It's a, the parents aren't saying to your kid, oh my gosh, don't be mad, that's a bad thing. We're not doing that. We're not doing that anywhere. I'm sure there's parents that are, but for the most part, that's not what we're doing. We're giving off a way of being. We're giving off an essence that spiritually anger is not a good thing. And I just think that is an important conversation in this realm of forgiveness, and I just thought it was exquisite that these kids, that these small children brought this to a head. I'm like, hmm, another fabulous thing to talk about in the movie. Mm. Well, it was outstanding. In fact, I think for me personally, that was the one thing that really drew me in the most, was listening to the children because, well, I guess, you know, I have grandkids now, and so mm -hmm. I listen to what they say, and everything, they're like a sponge, and everything that they gravitate to that becomes their belief system comes from us, right? Yes. So it, it was just so, so powerful and significant, like you said, for you to start with the children. So let's move in then to you and your good friend Gary Weinstein. Could you tell us, and we know that something tragic happened in 2005 that brought the two of you together, yeah. so can you just share with us a little bit about what happened and how Project Forgive began? I sure can, I sure can. And um, you know, I've known Gary, Gary has been a dear friend of ours, gosh, for 20 years, so I've known him for a long time. His kid, my kids babysat his kids. His kids, you know, my kids were like eight, ten years older than his, and um, his wife was my husband's business coach. And what happened was, like anyone's nightmare, a, a car crash happened. A drunk driver hit his family, his wife and two kids, Sammy and Alex, and killed them all. And it was a devastating day. Uh, they're very prominent family in the community, uh, very well known for theater, and um, and that day, as you can imagine, was pretty painful. And what made it most extraordinary, and I know it's such an odd word to say when three people get killed by a drunk driver, what made it most extraordinary that day for me is to find out and get a phone call that the man who killed them, the man who hit them, who was drinking and driving, is also another dear family friend of ours. So when that happened, it's, it's like, you know, I get goose pimples every time I talk about it, because you know how like you get a spiritual charge of like, wow, what are the, the odds of this happening? Mm -hmm. Not that this is about me at all, because it's not. It just happens, it happened to happen to me, a storyteller, a filmmaker, that wow, something miraculous, something amazing is going to come out of this, because the odds of this happening are like one in a cabillion, right? Yeah. And knowing both these families, both amazing, extraordinary families, and to have this happen, something miraculous was going to happen, and that's what's happened. Miracles have happened out of it. Wow, it's incredible. So, so tell us a little bit more about that story, because I know that Gary had some time with Tom, right? He he mm -hmm. went there and explain about how that whole role of forgiveness took place. Because from what I know, the greatest example of forgiveness that you could possibly think of would be where a time in someone's life where they literally laid down every ounce of bitterness that they could possibly have towards someone else and that is true forgiveness so that's why this story for me became so significant so can you share a little bit of insight with that yeah you know Gary and Gary the one who lost his family and Tom the man who killed his family they ended up meeting in prison Tom obviously went to prison when you drink and drive even if you're an amazing loving extraordinary man you go to prison. That's just simply how it works. I do want to add that the day that that car accident happened, Tom's family, the, the man who caused this crash, his family was flying in here to Michigan to do an alcoholic intervention. It was going to happen the next day. So his family was a day late. So there's lots of pieces to it, right? So time has passed. This originally happened in 2005, and litigation happened. Different things happened because forgiveness is a process. Sometimes we think that, you know, like, oh, I forgive and forget, or oh, my goodness, I'm going to get to this place where bitterness is gone. There's an ebb and flow and a way of being that happens with forgiveness. At least that's what I've experienced myself and what I've noticed from doing all these interviews. Mm -hmm. And Gary really, really, really wanted to meet Tom because he knew that Tom had, even though Gary had not seen his children, they were now dead, he knew Tom, who was in jail, had not seen his children either, even though they were still living. He was cut off 
from access to his children and he was really worried about that he thought you know I'm in so much pain about not seeing my kids I wonder how Tom's doing with all the guilt all the pain he's going through for causing this and he doesn't get to see his children either and uh, he's really committed to, to connecting with Tom and he did and um, it was a miraculous meeting um, Tom has Tom has received a forgiveness from Gary and uh, I want to talk about this because we're talking about forgiveness tonight I want to dive deeper into what that could look like for those watching what does that mean does that mean all of a sudden you're done forgiving and it's a done deal no it doesn't mean that at all there's other important pieces to it forgiveness is not necessarily a straight line and boom it's done like a linear experience mm -hmm. there's so many different pieces to it as Tom is exemplified um, as he's gone through this so courageously mm. Yeah, absolutely. And that is definitely something that we're going to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of which, I mean, I've talked to numerous women just recently who tell me that forgiving themselves is probably the biggest struggle or biggest block that they have in their lives right now. No matter what it is, it could be something simple or it could be something really gigantic in their life, you know? So, when I hear this, when they when they talk to me about this, I literally have to contain myself because, of course, you know, I have a 10 video coaching course on this that, that teaches women step by step how to go through, how to understand, first of all, where a lot of this unforgiveness comes from, whether it be generationally or whatever. We're taught mm -hmm. a lot of this. But with, with, you know, hundreds of men and women around the globe making a decision to forgive and it's still creating these blocks for themselves in doing so, what would you say to to women around the world about taking that first step toward forgiveness? Yeah, the, the biggest thing I've learned and what I've noticed myself because I do come from an incest background, I'm an incest survivor, so I've learned a thing or two about forgiveness along the way. And one of the things that I see uh, that I've seen and I've experienced myself and with those that have masterfully forgiven in a powerful way, forgiveness is a skill, man. It's mm. a mindset, it's a skill, it's a way of being. It's something you get really, really good at. And um, and one of the first steps, because self forgiveness is the hardest, it just is. It's mm -hmm. easy. It gets easier to forgive external circumstances. It's really our internal stuff. Oh, my butt's too big. Can I forgive myself for eating <laughs> that Reese's peanut butter cup? or whatever it might be. Are you guys relating to this, right? Like oh, feeling totally. that guilt? And um, the mantra that I use a lot in when I do my workshops is, can you forgive yourself for not forgiving yourself? That's simply a first step. You know, I'm really angry at myself that I did this. I can't believe I'm so stupid. I didn't see it coming. And um, my first mantra is always, can, well, Sean, can you forgive yourself for not forgiving yourself? And I could take a deep breath, breathe in the moment. Yeah, I can forgive myself for not forgiving myself because forgiveness really is a skill and it's a process and it's a way of being, as Mother Teresa would say. It's not like a, a finite act that you did like, aha, the stars, ah, I've forgiven. <laughs> it doesn't quite look like that. Exactly. And it doesn't look like that for a lot of people. That's right. That's right. I, that's significant what you said. Can you forgive yourself for not forgiving yourself? I would imagine that that's helped numerous women already right there in itself. So I'm going to turn to our panel here for just a second. So ladies, the things that you've heard Sean talk about here tonight, how do you how do you relate when someone talks about forgiveness and you might have some tendencies yourself like I do, like we all do, to come up against this block? Are you able to say what she said? Can you forgive yourself? For not forgiving yourself. Kelly, why don't we start with you? <laughs> I was the wrong person to start with. I've been crying for five minutes now. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so shall we move to somebody else or should we just sit with it? I think we should sit with it and tell her, tell Kelly how much we love her. Yeah. She's so awesome. <laughs> right. Thank you for bringing vulnerability to the, to the oh, hangout. Definitely. It's, it's funny. I've been, I've been going through a lot of stuff. <laughs> for the past two weeks and, and Kelly knows about all my stuff I'm going through and uh, yeah so it was funny when when uh, Kelly mentioned you know Kelly why don't you talk I was like she's gonna ask me I just know it I just know it <laughs> and I was already in tears because of the story and you know and uh, thinking about you know back when I got burnt you know I was two years old and you know my grandpa making the decision to allow my cousins who were 9 and 11 at the time to go outside and burn the singles and never did my grandpa think that that little decision could lead to me almost dying 
you know, because my mom let me go outside to help my cousins, or at least just to be there, and little did my mom know that her decision to let me go outside could have cost me my life also. And my mom has never, ever forgiven herself for letting me go outside. And of course, yeah, <laughs> causing me to have a lifetime of surgeries and rejection and teasing and staring and, you know, just basically a tough life, right? And uh, so, yeah, my mom has never forgiven herself for making that decision. And I know my grandpa never forgave himself for making that decision, you know. I mean, who would let seven and nine-year-old kids and a two-year-old go outside and play around the fire? You know, nobody thinks that that little decision could potentially cost somebody's life. And uh, so, yeah. Mm, Kelly, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for being bold enough to continue on through the tears. Because <laughs> we, you know, like Sean said, I mean, we just need to pour love, pour love into people <laughs> when you're feeling that vulnerability. So thank you for sharing that. Kelly, I, I do want to ask you a question. Um, with that deep, um, I don't know if you, if you would call it sorrow that you have, um, is that something that you have been able to release yourself completely? Or is it, like Sean was saying, is it a process? Does it come and go in ebb and flow? Well, I never blamed my family for me getting burnt. I never blamed my grandpa. I never blamed my cousins for throwing the shingles. I never blamed my mom. Um, I've never blamed anybody. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel like I had to forgive them. You know, because uh, to me it was, it, I felt I was destined to be burnt so that I could be a speaker, so I could share my story and help other women to realize that they need to love their beauty no matter what they look like. And so I don't think there was that forgiveness needed to happen. You know, I, I believe that there's probably some own, my own forgiveness of... Um, I don't know, maybe things I've done or decisions I've made or, you know, ending my marriage or, you know, different things like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to forgive myself for that type of stuff, but I don't actually believe that my burns or the decision that my grandparents or my parents made mm -hmm. needed mm -hmm. to be forgiven. I don't know if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. And maybe sure, because I was two years old. I was two. So I never really knew how I got burnt until I was like 18 years old. Mm -hmm. It was never discussed. It was like the taboo subject, and it was like there was all this guilt surrounding what happened to me. And so everybody just kind of, as far as they were concerned, I wasn't even burnt mm -hmm. because people loved me even though I had mm -hmm. scars. It didn't matter that I had scars. Yeah. So I was still allowed to do whatever anybody else, you know, was allowed to do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. You know, I would imagine when you said that you felt that you were destined to be burned so that you could do what you're doing today, I'm sure that shocked a lot of people because I know, and I think Sean, I think, believes this too, and I know Kim and Gail think the same thing. Everything that we have been through in our lifetime has brought us to where we are today. That's that's after a lot of forgiveness, after a lot of work, internal work. And if you're not at that place yet, don't worry about that. It, truly, it is something that you can get to if that is a desire of yours. But not everybody has a desire to, to be and do something with their story or with their life and the results of. So, you know, I'm going to move on. Gail or Kim, I want to ask you a question. Um, I know that over time you both have gone through your own situations. Has there been a time where you have felt as though forgiveness was so far removed from you but yet you knew that it was a choice that you needed to make? Two things. One, we have a viewer who wants to share her just a tiny bit of her story and she said that today she forgave herself for feeling guilty about being too sensitive. Hmm. Awesome. Good job, Anne. Yay! Good job. Yay. Awesome. Love it. Thank you so much for telling us that. That's awesome. We're celebrating with you. Now, did you say that was Anne? Anne. Yes. yes. Anne. All right. Okay. Thank you, Anne, for writing in. And anybody else listening, please feel free to just share with us what's on your heart right now. I would love to hear. We would love to hear it. So, mm -hmm. so Kim, did you have an answer to that 
question that I had asked. Yeah. Hopefully you remember it because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got to share it today uh, on HuffPost Live. We were talking about um, women in the IT industry. And one thing that happened to me in my career that could have been a showstopper if I had not walked in forgiveness. I had a man to tell me I should be barefoot and pregnant at home like his wife and that I should not be working in corporate America and that I didn't have the skill set or and, and that I didn't have the ability to perform like a man in IT. And this happened in the 2000s, mind you. <laughs> Hard to imagine, but it still happens. Yeah, I, I had to walk in forgiveness. It, it hurt me because I had a college degree. I had years of experience in IT. I was a programmer. And he was telling me that my value of myself was misplaced. Mm -hmm. And so I had to walk in forgiveness. And because I did, I ended up becoming his boss. <laughs> and, I, and if I hadn't walked in forgiveness and I had held that in my chest and, 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 and just not, you know, just not get over it, I, I really feel that I would have sabotaged myself from getting promoted to project manager over the entire project, thereby becoming his boss. And, and I didn't even lower it over him. And because I did walk in forgiveness, he changed his mindset about women in IT. Wow. wow. That's huge. So it wasn't just for me that I was walking in forgiveness. It was for him, too. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of times I think that's where our, our blocks do come from is by making the decision to not walk in forgiveness. And that's tough because it also it, it cuts off our creativity. And the fact of the matter is making the decision is truly just that, like, like Sean was saying, it's a skill. It is a choice and you keep repeating it day after day and sometimes moment by moment depending on what you're dealing with every day. So, you know, don't feel alone ladies, seriously. This is just an awesome time for you to learn that we are all the same. We are all the same. We just have more time sometimes to work on our skill set. And I'm glad that you're all understanding at this point that it is a skill set because I think sometimes we feel so alone. Like we're the only ones going through this. Like we just, we don't know anybody else that hasn't forgiven somebody or, for, or themselves for something that they've done or said or experienced. So this is very significant. Gail, what about you? I think you're, you might still be muted. I'm not sure. Am I muted? There you go. Okay. Um, I have two that really stick out to me and um, real quick. One, one is that I lent multiple tens of thousands of dollars to a friend on credit, on my credit card because they were in a bind and then they actually just kind of forgot about it and chose not to, to uh, repay me. And so, you know, I went through all the proper channels of, I could technically have her, her wages garnished, but it's just, it sucked me into this, such a low energy and just to where I didn't feel, I just felt like it was better to forgive and to let go and to move on with my life and then instead of trying to pursue something that that was um, just so, it just felt so ugly. Mm. And, and then the other thing was kind of had the tables turned on me in the real estate boom my mom had her house uh, was completely paid for and through a series of real estate transactions she quit claimed it to us and we put it into real estate that equity into real estate and we ended up losing her home and okay. that was um, I mean you know you talk about being able to forgive somebody else but then being able to forgive yourself is to me it felt insurmountable and not until I could see the pain it was causing my mom to see me and my mom had to move in with us so to see the distress that it was causing her I really had to um, you know find a way to forgive myself and it still creeps in it just you know every once in a while it's just like oh if I hadn't done that so mm -hmm. you know the, the I haven't quite found the key to making it stay away and that's why I was so excited that Sean's here. Mm -hmm. 
So, Sean, what what do you think is the key, or is there a key? Um, you know what I see over and over again in research and with the people that I've met that are in such a peaceful place is allowing the feelings to come because there's so many stages to forgiveness there's actually about five shock denial whatever it is that happened to you mm -hmm. then anger anger is critical to get having being completely free and at peace anger is the critical component and what's underneath anger is grief I'm not talking about suffering I'm talking about actually feeling the grief then moving into acceptance and then when you're actually at peace. Now it's not this linear movement that all of a sudden you go through the five steps and you're done. Because Gary would be a great example. He lost his two sons, right? At peace, feeling really good, grieved a, a great deal, grieved a great deal of his losses. And then here we just had graduation and one of his sons would have been graduating from high school. Okay, so this new phase of grief pops up, first rage comes up, he's furious, he's watching all these other parents, their children are graduating and here he is with no children when his child would be graduating from high school. So he goes through furious, then he feels grief because he's missing out on that graduation and then he comes to acceptance and peace again. So you're always going through these waves, right? And in and the critical pieces are really embracing the anger and allowing the grief to come. And what I'm hearing you guys share, you know, a lot of stuff comes to mind because I hear stories like this over and over again. The critical piece to getting angry and grieving your losses is so you don't keep repeating the same mistakes because we attract what's in our lives. We attract the people that are going to screw us over. Am I allowed to say this on the show? <laughs> okay. You already did. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> we, like... We're attracting them. If we had better discernment, we wouldn't pick people that are going to rip us off. We w you know what I'm saying? We wouldn't pick that. Um, and I'm even looking at, like, I've had business partners where I lost 20 grand with this one chiropractor. My biggest lesson about this, and I was mad at him probably for a good week. I lost 20 grand. I was furious with him. As soon as I was able to move through the furious, I really grieved my losses. Like, deep grief. I'm, like, talking sobbing and grieving and allowing yourself to grieve. Mm -hmm. And really owning that I had funny feelings with him along the way. I wasn't listening to those funny feelings. Mm -hmm. The red flags were there all along. And by allowing myself to get angry, grieve my losses, I don't attract people like that anymore. I don't make the same mistakes. I make better mistakes. You know, as I'm growing, I'm making better mistakes, okay? Because um, I'm stepping into do new levels of discomfort, you know? And when I hear Kelly, can I keep going for a sec? Yes, please. You know, I'm listening to Kelly, um, and although what happened to, happened to me with my Ph.D. is nothing compared to being disfigured or burned, okay, as a two-year-old, I'm almost done with my Ph.D. And last... Christmas, I was defending my prospectus. This was like my crowning moment to be able to move on and do my research, and I failed. I failed. Oh, all right, so you got to get, I'm a straight A student. I've been like teacher's pet my whole life through my whole academic career. I am a book smart, very savvy academic person. I just am, okay? Mm -hmm. So to fail this defense was shocking to me. I was in shock, okay? And the next day I was flying off to India, I was going to a spiritual conference and, um, and I had to do like four different speeches. I was in so much pain. I was on the plane for 27 freaking hours. Okay? Oh my. And I'm like, oh, and I was so mad. I had, and what I saw, and I had funny feelings about my advisor all along. I was her first PhD student for her to mentor. Looking back now, here it is six months later, what I did in that defense was a joke. It was hysterical what I did. I did everything wrong. I did, I mean, if I would have watched me, I would have said, who is this crazy woman and what is she doing? Okay? Uh -huh. So there's a lot of places I can go. First of all, forgiving myself and being angry at myself for not getting it right. Second of all, I picked an advisor that had no clue how to coach me. Mm. I picked her and my fear level doing this was so high I had funny feelings said is are you sure we should be doing this is this looking right absolutely I listened to her all along the way and it was a fiasco 
Now, I could stay in the place of being so angry at her, and then when I graduate and become a PhD and they call me doctor, I can be like a lot of PhDs and complain about what a torturous experience it is to get your PhD, because most of them talk about the torture of the experience. Mm -hmm. The missing, though, is the becoming or the being of a researcher, a doctor, uh, and being in that realm because really it's life lessons that I've been learning as a PhD and it's discernment and it's going through the shock, the rage at this advisor who's an innocent bystander very similar to Kelly's mom and grandparents. They're innocent in their own way. I mean they made honest to goodness authentic high integrity mistakes. They really did. So did my advisor. She's amazing. She's an awesome, loving, extraordinary person that totally set me down the wrong path. Does that mean I'm not allowed to be angry? No. It doesn't mean that I go yell at her? No. No. It means I go through my process of being so mad and so furious because I was ticked. And then the grief that I went through because I've been working on this PhD for eight years. PhD has become my identity in some ways, which has actually disentangled my identity as an academic, which has been glorious for me and my identity and my growth. And I grieved. There were there were nights I was on that couch. It lasted four freaking months, you guys, like deep grief. I, there were some nights I just said, honey, I'm in so much grief, I just need to be alone on the couch, where I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. Because a lot of times we, we pick people in our lives to have us move through something that's going to unearth old stuff. And for me, it was unearthing more incest stuff. So everything just keeps building and building and building. And the key, the key, if I can just get this across the most, is allowing the anger to come when it comes doesn't mean you're being abusive to someone doesn't even mean you have to share it with them doesn't mean that could be mean could mean writing a horrible letter to your mother and your grandmother Kelly or your grandfather <laughs> just like how you, do you get what I'm saying it could be that because it's such a critical piece and I know it's an uncomfortable conversation to have on this hangout and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it because that's what I'm seeing over and over again are the critical pieces they just are mm. long answer to a short question how's that no, no, I don't think any of these questions are short answered because we all go through our own processes. Now, I know, you know, again, Anne has um, just let us know that her belief is that the forgiveness part does come in the actual letting go process. And and I think that's that's pretty much what we're all talking about here. It, it does take time, and as Sean was, you know, deciphering that there are five different steps that we all go through. Some people go through seven steps or 12 steps, whatever it might be. Everybody... Although we are the same, we are also very unique in the processes that we go through. Um, all very typical sometimes, but they are unique because they're us. They they ha are happening to us. You know. And you know, of, Kelly. Oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. I was just going to say right before um, Sean mentioned that Anne had written in that um, the other part of forgiveness is letting go, and that it requires constant practice. And that's right. an excellent excellent point. Right. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's one question I want Sean to, to address that, and, and, and it's for a, a good reason. For those who have lost a loved one, and not just a loved one, uh, but a spouse. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and part of that process of losing is, is grieving. Where mm -hmm. does forgiveness fit in that whole process of grieving? You know, that's such a beautiful beautiful conversation and I have a very dear friend who I hung with for years and her husband died who was also dear to me and she's in her third year and the waves of grief the wave of anger come and go are they as intense as they were a year you know a year ago or even two years ago no and you are so right Kelly too when you're saying it's so different for everyone when you have something tragic like that happen to you a soulmate like that happen the focus can't be forgiveness the focus has to be, how am I going to get through today? Seriously, because if you know someone or have been with someone or are someone that have lo has lost a spouse that you deeply love, it sometimes is a day-to-day -day thing. Mm -hmm. um, I still see Lynn, here it is three years later, just posting on Facebook, I'm missing Jeff today. I just wanted you to know that I was just missing him today. And um, so for everybody, it truly is different. And I find that, especially when it's tragedy, 
taking the end goal of forgiveness off the picture, off the radar, just like, and what am I going to do today? What is the next thing for me to do today? Especially when something unforgivable, like forgiving that unforgivable happens, because those are really tragic things that are tough to face. Yeah, that's interesting, Sean, to take that forgiveness level off the table. And I, I get what you're saying, because this this 10 video course set that I've designed, like the first five videos of that are just simply leading up to the choice. It's not even, okay, here's the step that you take to forgive. Okay, now here's the next step that you take to forgive. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. It's here's understanding of of what we can choose later on down the road. And so the last five, you know, four or five videos are all about those steps that you can take if you choose it. And I think, you know, God talks about, you know, seeking with all your heart, with all your heart, and you'll find it, right? Well, if you spend time seeking something with all of your heart, two things, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to find it or you're not going to find it, right? Mm -hmm. But typically, when we're seeking something with all our heart, we will do whatever it takes to get there. There's another saying, what you focus on expands. And I don't know who said that first, but you know, I give them a lot of credit because it's the, it's the honest to goodness truth. What you focus on does expand. So if you focus on the loss, if you focus on the bitterness or the anger or whatever it might be for any great length of time, that's what's going to become your main stable thought, you know. Um, but if you focus on, like Sean said, take forgiveness off the table, just sit with the anger. Just sit with it. Just be who you are in that process and forgive yourself for not forgiving yourself. I think that's so significant and I'm really glad that you brought that up in the beginning of the show because it is a huge, huge process to go through. So, Gail, let me come back to you for just a moment. I know you have gone through a lot. I mean, you have a daughter in, who was born with dwarfism. You've had a husband who has had brain injuries. You know, I know that you have different. Um, I don't. I don't want to say methodologies, but maybe different practices for yourself that, on a daily basis, that you go through in caring for for individuals in your life. So, tell us a little bit about one one main process that you feel that has been so significant that it's like the first thing that comes up in your brain when someone says, Gail, do you know how to forgive? What's the first thing that you would think of? That everything happens for a reason and that God's in charge. And we may not see the big picture, but everything does happen for the best. And, and to always be grateful, to have gratitude. It could have been worse. You may not see it at the moment, but it could have been worse. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You know, we talked early on how every single one of us have had really significant things in our lives that have occurred. And, and coming, as Kelly said, being destined to be in this place, you that does take an attitude of gratitude, which would you all of you ladies agree that that too is a skill to learn to be grateful every day? Very much so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I agree. Absolutely. I totally agree. When yeah, my daughter was going accessing. through, it, sorry. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. I was say when my daughter was going through all her surgeries, it was, you know, being the thought of being grateful didn't even enter my mind when I was so deep in it. But I think that if I would have had that skill at that time, it would have made a huge world of difference. Mm, yeah, in, I, in everything. I totally understand that. Sean, I'm going to come back to you in just one second. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, you just triggered something in me today. I I, I sit with um, patients who are dying, and I do it voluntarily. I'm not I'm not a nurse. I don't get paid for that, but I do that because I've had a number of people, close people in my life, who have died, and I've been there. But hospice has been there, and they walk you through the grief process, and it's such a beautiful thing. And they even bring you to that place of gratitude because you can't help but be grateful for these people who come and just be with you when you're going through the most difficult time period of your life. So I've decided that for probably for the rest of my life I will do exactly that, sit with people who are dying. So today I'm with somebody. I've never seen anyone more grateful than this woman whose husband has just been 
completely unable to do anything for like the last eight years or so. But she sits on her couch and, and talks with a smile and laughs and talks about the beauty that he has inside of him. And it was just the most amazing experience. And I kept thinking, oh, if I could just have my video camera right here and just show the whole world <laughs> what gratitude really looks like. I mean, it was the most incredible experience. And, you know, being able to, to share those things when, like Gail's saying, when you go through those moments where gratitude is not even a thought in your mind, just making the decision to choose to be grateful for no matter what the day has in store for you or what you've already experienced right here, right now, look around your room. What is one thing that you can be grateful for? One thing. You know? Kelly, I see I even, Oh, sorry. I even, I even just, I tell God, thank you for the good, the bad, the ugly, because I know it's all here to serve me. So. Very true, very true. Um, Sean, I cut you off earlier, so. Oh, no, no, that's okay. I have a different take on it, because, you know, we're obviously not going to all agree on everything. Right. And, you know, we're in this authentic marketing stage. We're going to be in this authentic, I teach marketing, that's my business. And authenticity is going to be here for another 30 years. And when you show your ugly, ugly warts and ugly warts is when you're upset or you're angry or you're vulnerable or you're hurting like Kelly showed an ugly wart when she started to cry in culturally for me that was beautiful mm -hmm. and a lot of times in culture we get uncomfortable with those things and we think that it's really important to be to be in the state of gratitude and I think there's a time and place for gratitude you know my my grandson just broke his leg and I can tell you my daughter who's about to graduate from med school when she was in the hospital she was not grateful for that experience when it was going on mm -hmm. so there's a time and place for gratitude and um, and it's okay to be angry about what's going on in the moment or be scared or be nervous or be frightened all those things are okay because God Allah Buddha however you see a higher being for me it is God embraces all those emotions and he it gave us these emotions to be able to spiritually grow because I think the only reason we're here is to spiritually grow and of course just like Kelly like you were saying whatever you focus on expands as you expand your spiritual wisdom more gratitude is much more available you get more skilled at it you become be able to focus on more of that good stuff but if you don't deal with the festering wounds that never got healed you will keep repeating the same stuff over and over and over and over again so in a more general basic conversation of forgiveness the importance of staying with a feeling to me feels important to share and the principles that Gail and Kelly are talking about with gratitude and focus whatever you focus on expands those are more higher level higher vibrational spiritual principles and when you're in pain and it's not ma being managed it's hard to reach and do those things and then it becomes fake and unauthentic you ever met someone says oh it's fine everything's wonderful and you can feel their seething anger because they're trying so hard to be grateful they're trying so hard to focus on happiness mm -hmm. and it's inauthentic mm -hmm. so there's different pieces to it and I just wanted to add that piece yeah no thank you I that's an excellent add to that because it's very very true and I think too that you can sense the the genuine authenticity when someone is feeling that gratitude at the same time mm -hmm. so yeah again I mean we go back to saying the same thing it is a skill just like working to forgiveness is a skill and it does take a certain spiritual level I suppose to to get to that forgiveness at the same time so all right, here, here's another question. If someone is saying right now, and it, let me just ask him first, do we have any other um, questions or comments from any of the viewers right now? Yes, we do, from Anne. She said, oh, yes. <laughs> that, uh, Sean said. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so um, again, thank you, and please feel free to submit any comments or questions that you have. So. Let, let's go back to the story between um, Gary and Tom for just a second. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Project Forgive. Now, I understand that you're still on target for 2014. Is that correct? We are. We are. We're almost a halfway shot. We, uh, we actually, I just talked to the folks with Archbishop Desmond Tutu today. He's officially endorsed us. It's pretty huge what's happened. It's like, are you kidding me? Archbishop Desmond Tutu has won... The Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, he's he's the forgiveness dude. Okay? 
okay? Wow. And, uh, and he, isn't it cool? It's just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And um, he's got a book coming out too that will be shared because we're putting resources and, su and such on Project Forgive on our website. And um, and Project Forgive is not just a movie. That's just the catalyst to start this conversation and this movement. We're creating a speakers bureau. We're creating all kinds of DVDs because people and DVDs and book series and all that because people want this. Right. And this is the essence of love. This is the essence of. It, it crosses every spiritual boundary, gender, immigration issues, political, because everything we're doing is nonpartisan and non-religious, so anyone on the globe can participate in this because forgiveness is for everyone, regardless of what you believe, what, whatever your political beliefs are, it doesn't matter. Forgiveness is, is in the essence of who we are. So we're halfway shot. We're almost there. We've got lots of fundraisers coming up. We've created the nonprofit entity, the foundation that's funneling, and um, we're actually having philanthropists come forward to help us finish the funding and take us above and beyond the funding and take us to distribution. It's 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 just it's freaking cool. How's that? It's just like oh my gosh, <laughs> it, it's so significant. And that again. And that I have to come back to, that's why we had you on the show tonight, because it is a global movement that needs to continue, regardless of what religious background or denomination you are from, you mm -hmm. cannot deny that forgiveness is vital in this world, because without it, we still deal with all the demons in our lives that just keep cropping up all the time. Yeah, so, and even think about it, think about it, the divorce rate globally is over 50%, right? Yeah. And if you can't forgive the person you're making love with, that you're having children with, that you pledge to love for the rest of your life, if you can't forget, give them and you get divorced, how are we going to eliminate violence? How are we going to eliminate war with people we don't even like and they're different than us in our stereotypes of cultural discrepancies or, di or di distinctions between cultures? If we can't even forgive those that we love so deeply, how are we going to forgive total strangers that are different than us? It's just not possible. A new realm of possibility has to be created. Yeah. Oh, amen to that. All right. Well, it is coming time where we do need to close our show, and we thank you so much as the viewers. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. And we want you to know at home that, you know, you don't have to struggle with this. You truly don't. Just like what you saw tonight, you know, if you break down in tears, you need to get support. You truly do. Because somebody just needs to be there to just sit with you sometimes. And then there are times when you don't want anyone around. And that's okay too. But just know what it is that you feel you need and go after that. You know, you're not alone. Like I said, we have so many people here within the day of love that are willing to stand with you and, and just be that firm wall for you that you might need to just lean on and that's why we've done this program because we f we want to focus on love we want to focus on forgiveness and let yourself truly live into that I also want to remind you that we do have a program called healing and restoring you and this brings out the key components that might be holding you back from forgiveness if that's truly what you want and no matter what your background is I mean we've done research for years Sean as you can hear has done research for years I've researched forgiveness for eight years I took a two and a half year sabbatical with God just to learn what love would look like through spiritual eyes so whatever level I might be at doesn't mean that that's where you have to be but we are starting at the beginning with this program and I've got to tell you that everything that I've learned during my conversations with God are in this program so you're gonna learn how to forgive at a level that you may not have ever even thought about before so that's all I'm gonna say about that but if forgiveness does interest you then please go to dayoflove.org forward slash course that's c-o-u-r-s-e dayoflove.org forward slash course um, you'll also actually I just do want to mention one thing that you'll get um, Kelly Fillard Secret to Self Love program as an extra gift. So it's kind of like a two for one. Um, if you're, awesome. Not, awesome. <laughs> if you're okay. not ready to do this, then don't go for it. It's okay. You have to be at the point where maybe you've suffered with bitterness long enough, or maybe you've suffered some other way long enough. I mean, that's where we've all gotten to. We've gotten to that place where we just say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to make a different choice. But like I said, just be ready. Thank you so much, ladies. Sean, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For you. Mm, my pleasure. People, get that course. Just do it. Boy, you need some freedom. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just say things before you eat. Well, three. Okay. One, Anne says, right now, and she put it in all caps, I am grateful for being part of this Day of Love program. 
Woo-hoo. Yay. Awesome. Love you. Thank you. Hey, I mean, it was very quiet there tonight, so thank you. All right. I so, am so glad that you created the Day of Love Heal and Restore program because mm-hmm. I went through it and it helped me. And I went through it with a partner who is here mm-hmm. with me. <laughs> who is that? And it rocked. It rocked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it is definitely, it, it's an incredible program. And, and I'm not saying that because I created it, because honestly, I don't feel as though I created it. Sean, let me ask you a question before we go. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that you personally have created the Project Forgive? No. No, no. Exactly. No. Exactly. No. No, I just got the catalyst, and boy, I've been working my Trishy off. I've learned more about forgiveness and done more personal growth in the last year of my life than I've done in my 50. <laughs> Amen. Like, Amen. Everybody, it's like everybody's dreams are coming true within this project. No, I just, I just get the privilege of being in charge. How's that? Exactly. Fake in charge. Kind of fake in charge. And that's exactly how I feel about this program, too, which is why I asked you that question, because you cannot do something like this alone. You oh, have gosh. to have everybody around you. And when you do research, like when you talk to five-year-olds, for instance, you learn so much more. Mm-hmm. And even though they're innocent, they have such wisdom, such, such wisdom. So mm-hmm. I want to encourage you also to get your mothers, your daughters, your neighbors, your cousins on these episodes, because every woman deserves a day of love, and we intend to share this message with the world. So. Until next time, look us up on Facebook at Day of Love Event, and remember to give yourself a day of love. Good night, everybody.